Bex also up uh, 1.9 points, closing at 159.4 points. And uh, right now, let's have a look. In Egypt, riots in Egypt continue to dominate news and headlines to drive market movements as well. Earlier on, Eleni Jockers spoke with Evan Jones, who's the managing director of KD's Wealth in Cape Town, for a look at the impact that this unrest is having on the perception of African markets as a whole. Yeah, I think obviously, um, I think in the in the in the greater scheme of things, it's probably still early days to know uh, what the what the full impact's going to be, and we're certainly seeing um, how a lot of the conflict uh, or um, rioting, etc., is spreading to different countries, trying to with with similar problems. So, I think that um, certainly what we've seen, um, and and obviously this is a question on everyone's lips, is to what extent uh, the rand's weakness, the current weakness, is reflective of. Uh, you know, general emerging market concerns, and we know from from our history with Iran is that it's it's often used as a release valve um, when um, for investors who invested across Africa, uh, largely because it's, it's the most liquid um, uh, currency. I think we also saw that the uh, the Egyptian bourse was closed um, and trading suspended, and so if you have positions in Egypt and you aren't able to get out of them, perhaps you turn to the most liquid market and maybe even use currency as an initial. Uh, as an initial uh, uh, release valve. So I think um, time will certainly tell uh, whether this, um, you know, uh, it, 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 it fuels itself or, or whether actually things settle down. I do think, though, that long term um, this is good for Africa because I think we've, we, we all know um, uh, uh, people sitting in Africa that there are a number of different uh, countries which have sat with uh, very long term regimes, uh, potentially repressive regimes. And uh, we've been wondering when the regime changes would ever happen. And uh, you, you're already seeing um, you kind of the, the domino effect that, that Egypt has, has started to trigger. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, long term, I, I think it's actually very beneficial. Uh, apart from all the issues with democracy in those regions and the fact that most students like Hosni Mubarak have been in power for around 30 years, one of the other catalysts seems to also be rising commodity prices. We've seen it in the likes of food inflation as well. And this is also why there's been a lot of concern on the ground as to uh, unemployment and low wages. What kind of impact is this going to have? We had Jim Rogers saying that uh, more social unrest is going to lead to high commodity prices, but some would argue that high commodity prices has led to social unrest. Yeah, it's, it's obviously a very interesting debate <clears throat> as to what, what triggers what. I think, I think the reality is, and we see it in South Africa as well, is that high levels of unemployment means that you have people who have time on their hands and time to think about um, you know, their, their fortunes. Um, and so when social unrest or when the opportunity for social unrest presents itself, you've got uh, a lot of people who prepare to step up to the plate and actually do something about it. Um, interestingly, uh, I was reading uh, Stratfor, um, who kind of assessed 